osteoarthritis. A major risk factor for this condition is obesity. Patients typically present with joint pain that gets worse throughout the day with this condition. The most commonly affected joints are the first carpal metacarpal joints, as well as the distal interphalangeal. Patients may even have Herpden or Bouchard nodes without active synovitis. Imaging of osteoarthritis may reveal joint space narrowing, subchondral sclerosis, subchondral cysts, and osteophytes. First-line treatment includes acetaminophen, second-line treatment and instead such as naproxen, and third-line treatment is joint replacement surgery. Psoriatic arthritis. This condition is typically asymmetric and often presents with dactylitis and involvement of the distal interphalangeal joints. Erythematous salmon colored patch with silvery scales on the elbows and knees and joint pain in fingers may all be indicative of psoriatic arthritis. When you do imaging of these joints, you may see a pencil and cup deformity. Preferred treatment is with NSAIDs. Now let's discuss arthritis and hypertension. Naproxen and other NSAIDs are COX enzyme inhibitors, which have a primary role in synthesizing prostaglandins and prostacyclines. NSAID use can precipitate acute kidney injury because of decreased prostaglandin synthesis which would otherwise promote renal afferent arterial vasodilation. This can cause worsening of hypertension, especially in patients taking ACE inhibitors such as lisinopril. As a result of autoregulation mechanisms, increase in blood pressure to increase renal perfusion. So, if in a clinical scenario, you have a patient with arthritis and hypertension, and let's say that their hypertension was previously controlled, but once you started managing or treating their arthritis, their hypertension is no longer controlled or it's just higher than normal. This is something that you need to consider. Look at what hypertensive drugs they're currently taking and what arthritic drugs they're taking and see if any changes can be made so that both conditions can be managed appropriately. Biceps tendonitis. Patients with this condition have a history of repetitive throwing, pulling, or lifting, and usually present with anterior shoulder pain. The biceps tendon consists of one short and one long tendon. Injury to the long tendon is more common than injury to the short head, giving its anatomic location. Physical exam may reveal pain upon palpation of the tendon within the intertubercular groove located along the anterior humerus. To treat, these patients require adequate rest and gradual reintroduction of activity. Septic arthritis. The next best step in management, of course, is an arthrocentesis. You want to go ahead and treat these patients with a joint washout and antibiotics. If you suspect a gonococcal arthritis, you can give ceftriaxone and doxycycline or, or azithromycin. The most common cause of septic arthritis is staph aureus. The most common cause in sickle cell patients is salmonella. In septic arthritis, patients have fever, reduced range of motion of the affected joints, and refusal to bear weight. Labs may show leukocytosis and increased concentrations of inflammatory markers such as CRP and ESR. When you get back that arthrocentesis results, you can note purulent synovial fluid with more than 50,000 leukocytes. 
treat with operative management and antibiotic coverage of empiric pathogens, for example, vancomycin and a third generation cephalosporin. Acute rheumatic fever. Patients with this condition may have migratory polyarthralgia, pancarditis, subcutaneous nodules, erythema marginatum, fever, increased ESR, and short PR intervals following an infection from group A strep, most often pharyngitis. So if a patient had a group A strep infection or pharyngitis, and then they have this pancarditis, the subcutaneous nodules, you want to think about acute rheumatic fever. Leg calf perthes disease. This is an idiopathic avascular necrosis of the femoral head that most commonly occurs in younger boys from four to nine years old. They have a slow onset of hip pain, which is worsened with activity and associated with a limp. They typically have no fever or leukocytosis. If you're enjoying this content so far, please be sure to pop the like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you never ever miss another video like this. Reactive arthritis. Can't see, can't pee, can't climb a tree. That's what we use to remember reactive arthritis. This is typically associated with HLA B27, and the classic bug is chlamydia. We treat these patients with steroids and we only give antibiotics if there is an ongoing infection. Rheumatoid arthritis. This is an autoimmune inflammatory arthropathy that results in symmetric involvement of multiple joints, most commonly the MCP and PIP joints of the hands demonstrating articular erosions and progressive joint space narrowing, ulnar deviation of the fingers, and butonier and swanet deformities commonly occur. So let's say that you have a woman being treated for rheumatoid arthritis. It's well controlled and she wants to become pregnant. What therapy needs to be stopped in pregnancy? Methotrexate. This inhibits dihydrofolate reductase and can cause neural tube defects. Hemochromatosis. So let's say that you have a 65 year old male that has erectile dysfunction and skin hyperpigmentation. You also note new onset diabetes, pseudogout, and arthritis in the shoulders, elbows, and ankles. Well, you want to consider hemochromatosis. The pathophysiology of this condition is that there is iron deposition in various organs. And this iron that is deposited in various organs can undergo oxidation, which causes destruction. We treat with phlebotomy. This is also the treatment for polycythemia and porphyria cutanea tarda. It has an autosomal dominant inheritance. Patients with hemochromatosis are found to have mutations in the HFE gene. If patients have injury or damage to the ulnar nerve, you may note weakness and muscle atrophy of the medial aspects of the hand. The supraspinatus tendon is the most common location of rotator cuff injury. Injury to the supraspinatus tendon may occur from degeneration, impingement, or trauma and can be evaluated through AB or abduction of the shoulder against resistance. Knowing the rotator cuff muscles is very high yield. I have a video that goes through that and I'll be sure to list that in the description below. Osteosarcoma. Patients have chronic pain, bony swelling, and a history of malignancy in childhood. So this would raise suspicion of osteosarcoma. It's the most common type of primary bone cancer. It typically occurs in long bones, frequently above the knee and the distal femur or below the knee in the proximal tibia. 
The metaphysis is often affected. Causes include familial cases, especially involving the retinoblastoma or P53 tumor suppressor genes, bony dysplasia such as osteitis deformans or Paget's disease, and fibrous dysplasia and exposure to radiation. To diagnose this condition, you need to do bone biopsy, and it's also supported by radiographic findings such as the Codman's triangle. Osteoporosis. Well, in this condition, the EXA scan reveals bone density less than 2.5 standard deviations compared to a young normal population. Risk factors include low BMI, age, smoking, chronic inflammatory disease, corticosteroid use, and estrogen depleting conditions in women. But the top top risk factor is low BMI. So if you see a clinical scenario and you know for sure that this patient has osteoporosis and they ask you what is the greatest risk factor for developing this condition, most likely the answer will be a low BMI. Osteoporosis increases the risk for fractures, most commonly involving the hip, vertebrae, and distal radius. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis, or SCIFI, most commonly occurs in overweight children between the ages of 10 and 15 years. It results in a displacement of the femoral epiphysis relative to the femoral neck caused by a fracture of the growth plate. Another condition to know is toxic transient synovitis or transient synovitis. This is an inflammatory arthropathy that presents with pain in a joint, often the hip, frequently following a viral infection in a child. So a little more on osteoporosis. We can prevent this condition by giving calcium and vitamin D supplementation, reduction of active osteoporotic risk factors, and weight-bearing exercises. So remember risk factors for osteoporosis that you can actually change or, or that are modifiable includes smoking. However, you can't really do anything about you know the patient's age. And another major risk factor is low BMI. So we can probably implement a, a diet or different factors that could um, correct that in a healthy manner. Bisphosphonase such as alendronate inhibits osteoclast activity. They are utilized once an individual is diagnosed with osteoporosis to reduce further loss of bone mineral density. So dactylitis, this presents at age six months to four years with an acute onset of pain and symmetric swelling of the hands and feet. If you see this, especially in African-American patients, you want to consider that this may be due to sickle cell disease. Some additional points to note is, with this question, what is the most common cause of sepsis in patients with sickle cell disease? Strep pneumonia. Broad spectrum empiric antibiotics such as ceftriaxone should be given to patients with sickle cell disease presenting with sepsis. What is the likely diagnosis in an adolescent with a history of hemophilia A that presents with gradually worsening pain and limited motion of his knee? Hemophilic arthropathy. Patients can have recurrent bleeding, which leads to hemosiderin or iron deposition, leading to synovitis and fibrosis within the joint. The risk is significantly reduced with prophylactic factor concentrates. Some bonus points in hemophilia is that inhibitor development inhibitor should be suspected when a patient with hemophilia A on factor replacement therapy develops increased bleeding frequency or has hemorrhage refractory to treatment. Treatment of an acute bleed in a patient with inhibitor development often involves bypassing products, example, Activated prothrombin complex concentrates.